Hello everybody, it's Jan from the mountain. I'm bringing you some more moments from my life here, on top of a mountain. I live in a medieval village, which was actually founded by the Romans, in deepest, darkest, rustic Tuscany. It's been so hot lately. This was the temperature in my bedroom after midnight. 30 degrees Celsius. I did actually take time out during the recent hot weather to go to a place very near Florence to a concert. This is a park in Cotica and I will link the information about this park below for you to find out more. We parked our car in a car park and were bussed to the actual um, concert venue. It was only five minutes in the car. It was to stop any congestion. And I put my sneakers on because there was a bit of a walk down to the actual stage. It was all outdoor. But it was a beautiful walk with lots of surprises. Sculpture, modern sculpture, beautiful countryside and trees. It was only five or ten minutes at a leisurely stroll pace. With some of the scenery, you wouldn't believe this place was not that far away from the city of Florence. And the path is just winding its way down towards the venue. Down there you can just about see there was a little bar area where we could get something to eat or a drink. So we decided to have a nice cream, buy some bottles of water because it was very hot and also we collected our complimentary tickets. We were very lucky to be given complimentary tickets. After our ice cream, carrying on our little stroll, this wonderful venue with lots of surprises like this sculpture peeking up from behind the hedge. very peaceful, very peaceful atmosphere. We came across a person playing the harp and the harmonica at the same time. So we just stopped for a few minutes to listen. It was all very atmospheric. And the music I think was very Celtic inspired and folky music. further along the way and we saw this magnificent sculpture for which this park is quite famous. So, you know, you see something, you have to go and explore. And it was in this field. Oh look, there's a golf cart that doesn't work. It's taking some people towards the concert. We went to the statue and was a sea of lotus flowers and lotus plants and this amazing statue, a very Neptune-like statue with this sea of lotus flowers. Absolutely stunning. I can't even begin to describe the wonderful sensation of seeing this view on a very balmy summer night just before we actually Make our seats for a lovely concert. There's the stage, just look at that setting. We got very good seats to see of our tickets and look at that tree behind the stage <laughs> because the lighting was done in such a way as to shine on the tree in lots of colors 
this is the purple but it was also stunning in a red and a green when different songs are being sung. After the concert we were very lucky to be able to chat to one of the members there of the band and so we were probably the last to leave and we took the lovely walk again this time a little bit uphill towards the bus which would take us to our car to come home. A little while later I managed to lock myself out of my house and a neighbour helped me get back in so I bought this gift from the Grotta del Vento which is a very interesting cave nearby which is a tourist spot. It's in Agate Stone, Agata as they say in Italy. So I just wanted to give the gift to say thank you for helping me because um, it was extremely hot on the day that I managed to lock myself out without any keys, without my phone, without anything and my lovely neighbour was very kind and so I managed to get back in again. I just want to wrap it up in the original packaging. I don't want any fuss. I'm just going to give the gift to my neighbour. I thought I'd write a note and I remembered I had a stationery set from some time ago. So I found a little card in there and decided just to write a little thank you card to go with the gift. I always like the mystery of an envelope, don't you? I've been in my studio lately. Hurrah, I haven't been in my studio for quite some time on a regular basis. And in my last video, you saw me planning out the sketch for a watercolor painting of my daughter. Here she is with her little dog and her violin, because they're the two things she loves. I need to add a Renaissance medieval headdress. I haven't done that yet, but I'll be doing some more research and I've just transferred it to paper so I can get ready to paint it. I'm using Saunders Waterfoot, Waterfoot paper from St Cuthbert's Mill and I'm just going to tape it to this board. Just get everything ready. I don't normally leave my painting things out. Oh crumbs, I'm going to have to clean my palette there. I am using a different colour scheme. So a lot of artists will use the same palette, but I have been painting different things with different colour schemes. So I've decided to start afresh. it with some water. One to activate my paints, watercolour paints, but also to just wet the colours that I've got on my palette and just clean them away. I'm just wetting my paper here. 
ready to just drop in a very watery background. I have my own ways of doing things. I'm not a professional artist, although I have sold some of my paintings in my Etsy shop. I have my own way of doing things and I'm mostly self-taught for watercolour. And it's still all very much a learning journey for me. I've also decided I have sold paintings and it's a dream to be able to paint and earn your living but I think for the number of people that would like to do that and the number that actually succeed um, there's very few people that are very lucky enough to succeed I took the decision to just paint what I liked what I wanted to paint and experiment with different styles which is I think a luxury for a lot of artists who are chasing those sales I can well just experiment now I've done a series of family portraits with us in medieval renaissance clothing and this is the last one of the family group I do actually plan on doing one more um, but it's not from the actual immediate family as such but I've got my eye on painting um, and experimenting in a different style after this one and I'm quite excited about starting. It'll be portraits because I just love doing them. While I'm here just putting in a very watery colour for the dress, I did it in red, um, transparent red oxide because my reference picture had like a rusty undertone in the dress and a velvet, but I ended up changing my mind and doing a different shade. But anyway, you'll see that maybe next time. I'll just give you a very quick knitting update from my last video. You saw that I'd started my mega iron sweater project. Well, not quite, it's a cable sweater for an old school friend. Well, I did four or five centimeters and realized there was a twist. I had finished the first round and I thought it was twisted even though I'd been ever so careful not to twist it because I'm on a round needle. So I corrected the twist but in actual fact I was twisting it because it was okay. I doubted myself you see. So I got a little bit <laughs> demoralized I just didn't undid it and started again. I'm now past where I was before and I'll bring you an update next time. But it was very disappointing. So here I'm, I'm just putting in a very watery uh, layer of paint, mindful that it's a fabric and trying to create ripples and slight pleats and folds in the skirt. Has the first layer done. It's taking shape. You can see, you can see what it's supposed to be. I've got the head dress there, the, the hair covering. And anyway, I'll bring you more of an update next time. Please like the video and help me reach 100 subscribers by Christmas because that's my goal. Mr. Darcy says goodbye to you all and thank you for watching the video to the end. See you next time.